Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Oh my gosh, it's been a while. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are back here in the Minecraft Survival Guide world. It's been quite some time since I played in this world, in real time at least. I'm sorry if some of you guys are watching this long after this video has been uploaded. None of this information here is going to be super relevant to you, but sometimes I just feel like talking at the top of these videos. So yeah, it's been a while. While we've been doing a bit of a Skyblock series as an interlude because it was a little bit quicker and easier for me to do that before I went away on holiday for this little Christmas vacation that I just had. But we're back in Survival Guide. Survival Guide has not gone away. And in fact, the Skyblock series will not be going away either because a lot of people really, really liked that series. So we're going to be kind of doing those side by side over the weeks to come, starting, of course, with a return to the Survival Guide. And today, I really want to do something that's going to help me get back in the groove a little bit and that is to sort through my ender chest at long last because as you can see my ender chest is a bit of a mess right now I have no idea what's going on in here in fact there are only a couple of boxes in here which I feel like are actually worthy of being in here in the first place namely the fireworks box and my backup gear but we are going to do a comprehensive episode today about what you should store inside an ender chest starting of course with me emptying out my current inventory because good lord this is a bit of a mess i have like one wood log here i have some blocks of grass and dirt and goodness knows what else some of this stuff really needs compacting down and just putting in storage so that i can figure out what is on the surface level what is important to me and what should i take with me everywhere because of course the selling point of ender chests is the fact that you can bring the same inventory with you everywhere and that is obviously something that is very very powerful considering that we're going to be traveling from base to base a lot of my winter videos right now are going to be concerned with the ski resort project that we started out in that direction some 5,000 blocks in that direction and I really feel like we need to be getting on with that project so it's going to be nice to have a transferable inventory that I can take anywhere and know that I've got the important stuff with me and the dragon egg, much as it is a fantastic item and the, the kind of trophy item you get for beating the dragon, it is very important to Minecraft players. It serves no function. It has basically no purpose. It shouldn't really be in my ender chest to begin with. It's only been there because I didn't really know where else to put it. Likewise, these nether stars. I can make beacons with them, sure, but... I don't really have any need for them to be in my ender chest right now. So those are going to come out for a start. We've got a bunch of miscellaneous boxes here and there that have various other things in them, like music discs and so forth, that I really don't feel like we need to be bringing with us everywhere. And so, yeah, I'm going to clear out a few shulker boxes. We're going to do some color coding. I might even need to go to the end to get a few more shulker boxes, but I really think we should sort out the ender chest today. And I have designated a few chests up here in the upper storage system for things like honey blocks, some of the newer things and honeycomb and various other bits that we need and some of these aren't even labeled right now they're just miscellaneous I really should be a little bit more organized about this so yeah an organizational episode feels like it's on the cards it'll ease me back into video production now that I'm back here because let me tell you folks I feel a little bit rusty <laughs> at this point I feel like I have not played Minecraft for a little while it's been three weeks basically since I was out in the USA so I think we kind of need to get back into our groove here and it seems like I've probably left my redstone box somewhere over here yes this is another one of the essentials I mean it's named and everything this is kind of one of the ones I want to bring with me but even this is looking a little bit cluttered look there are leads in here there are magma blocks some of them might be vaguely useful for redstone things but they're not strictly speaking redstone components in their own right I can put the observers in there though yeah okay uh, <laughs> yeah this is going to need a lot more organizing than I initially thought and judging by what I've got in my storage area I think I only have a few shulker boxes left over and we're probably going to want to fill at least two rows of the ender chest with essential items so it's probably going to mean a little bit of an end raid as well and I guess I could sort through some of these shulker boxes that are just lying on the floor of my storage system here as well I think some of these are ones I've used out in the ski village already just to kind of have a bunch of uh the same sort of item together I had this ice farm out there that I think I can probably convert some of that into 
packed ice uh, for the purposes of storage, but also so that it limits the amount of space it takes up. And we can always get some more ice from that farm if we need it. Packed ice is a little bit harder to come by, I suppose. And then the rest of this is mainly stone and stone types, things like that. I've got a bunch of furnaces in there as well, which I think were from some redstone mechanisms that I was building out there. And this is just all oak leaves. <laughs> so I think I can probably swap that for this box in here, which had some saplings in. We're definitely going to be requiring some saplings as we go. Yeah, that feels like a good kind of nature box that we can use in the ender chest itself. So maybe we might be able to get away with just raiding a couple of end cities if we can, and we should be able to get a few more shulker boxes from that. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll offload the rest of this stuff into the storage system. I guess I can just chuck a bunch of the regular solid blocks in there. Probably not the wool, but the andesite, the polished andesite, the stone, the stone bricks, the cobble, the grass can go in there as well. Probably the dirt too. Perfect. Okay, and then I can just stash the rest of this stuff in here. And yeah, let's go and raid the end. In recent times, exploring the end and finding new end cities to raid has become more and more difficult. The reason being, of course, that I've explored a lot of the area around the central island and those end cities which still remain are kind of few and far between and also they look like this where there is not a whole lot going on inside them. I think I have, oh, we got a few diamonds out of that. That's not bad for the first new episode of the year. Let's see if we, oh, <laughs> we got duplicate that time. We actually got the uh, <laughs> the same, same loot in both chests. All right, I guess I'll take it. I'll take the chests as well. Looks like we have a couple of shulkers in this tower that I can dispatch, but I was wondering if you guys were interested in an episode about how to reset the chunks of the end, which is commonly the solution for people who are running out of end cities to raid, especially on multiplayer servers. And some people might consider it a little bit cheaty because technically speaking, you are just resetting the chunks. You aren't able to reset the end in any other way than just deleting the files. And so to some people, it does seem like a little bit exploitative. But then again, it might be one of the only legitimate ways of regaining easy access to things like shulker boxes when we need them for some more advanced projects. So I'm wondering how you folks feel about that. I'm going to put a poll up in this video. Hopefully I'll remember to do that because polls are notoriously difficult to remember once you've mentioned them on camera a couple of times. But I'm interested in what people think about the idea of resetting the chunks of the end. It might be useful to know as a server admin if your server members request something like that, but it's not typically something you do all that much in single player. So I was wondering if you guys are interested in seeing that in action. Looks like we have three shulker shells so far. But yeah, let me know in the poll and we might do an episode about that in the near future. But for now, it looks like we managed to get four shulker shells from this, which equals two more shulker boxes. Luckily, I brought a crafting table with me this time so we can transform those chests and always make ourselves a couple more shulker boxes. There we go. I'm going to use one of these to collect up all of the loot that we're getting from this because otherwise that's going to take up a lot of space in my inventory. The other one can probably go in the end chest for now so we can keep track of exactly how many we have. But I feel like we need to make sure that we mark this end city so that we know this one has been raided already. So I'm going to take out a bunch of blocks of the roof here. Otherwise, I might even bring some TNT or something like that in and blow a hole in it. So it was obvious from a distance that we had destroyed part of this end city and that it wasn't worth raiding in future. There we go. Now there's a giant hole in the roof of this one. And that means that I'm going to spot that as I fly past and know that this city is not worth tangling with to begin with. Let's continue on in a northerly direction. If that was the way we came out in the first place, I think it might be. So yeah, let's continue in a northerly direction. Hopefully we'll be able to come across a couple more end cities that I haven't raided already. But I'm going to cut away from this. I'll meet you guys back in the overworld and we're going to go through what I think is the essential kit to take with you in an ender chest. Hey folks, welcome back. So here is our total haul from those end city raids. We have ourselves a total of 28 shulker shells, which means we'll get about 14 shulker boxes out of that, which is enough, I think, to fill out the last kind of two rows of our ender chest. I don't think we're going to fill the entire thing with shulker boxes, though in fact, I kind of want to leave a few items or empty spaces along the bottom of the ender chest here so that we have enough room to swap items in and out casually when we want to instead of having to take out a shulker box, you know, and put it down in the world and then open that and then close that. But this one here is a prime example of useless junk that is apparently in this ender chest. So today, streamlining this seems like a very good idea. But first, of course, let's turn some of these logs into planks. Let's turn some of the planks into chests and let's turn the chests 
into shulker boxes. There we go. That's a solid supply. Let's just throw my pickaxe on the ground. Again, a little bit rusty. So I think, yeah, we can pop all of those in there. We have plenty of these that we can start to condense some items into. We'll color code them as we go as well. But this, I think, is going to be a fairly comprehensive guide to what to bring with you in your ender chest. Having taken a few notes and done a little bit of crafting off camera, I've come up with what I think is a fairly decent list. So we're going to start off with the wood and saplings box. Of course, wood being one of the most vital components of Minecraft. If you don't have wood with you, you really can't get started anywhere. Say you end up stranded somewhere without a great supply of wood. You are basically going to have to go and find wood in order to make anything. You need it for the handles, for tools, even if you are at end game, you know, you need wood for a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to bring with me at least one stack of each type of sapling and I've been doing a bit of grinding off camera to make sure we have a stack of each of these saplings because some of them like birch saplings and jungle saplings do take a little while to acquire but once you've got those you can put them in the box here we can put them in in basically any order but I like to keep them in the order they appear here just kind of you know, oak on one side as they were added to the game basically birch spruce jungle dark oak and acacia I think we might even bring two sets of dark oak saplings simply because dark oak requires a two by two area of saplings in order to grow a single tree whereas the rest of them can all be grown from one sapling so i think we'll bring that many saplings with us and then at least one stack of each of the logs as well. While these aren't strictly necessary for crafting stuff out of, it's kind of nice to have a selection of logs that you can use to test build pallets in different biomes if you're thinking about starting a base there. So I feel like we will probably bring at least one stack of each of the logs. Could potentially bring two stacks of dark oak if you wanted that to match up there. But what I'm going to fill the rest of this box with is bone meal in the form of bone blocks because those are going to be handy for growing the saplings with. Remember, one bone block ends up breaking down into nine bone meal, meaning that if you bring a about a stack of them with you, I've only got 45 here for now, but we could find some more of those as well. You're guaranteed to be able to grow at least one of the saplings. Sometimes they take a little bit of extra bone meal, but most of the time you'll be able to grow it with the produce of a single bone block and so you could fill those up with bone blocks to your heart's content because basically once you start growing the saplings into trees you'll probably be able to get enough saplings back especially if you have some sort of fortune tool on you last but not least i am going to bring along a stack of some sort of block to grow the trees on in this case it's going to be grass block you might want to consider using podzel or coarse dirt because both of those will not revert into dirt so you always end up with the same block meaning you're always going to put the same block back in the box you're not going to end up with a mixture of grass and dirt when you pack this box down again but we've got enough empty space in here that you could fill up with additional logs if you want to bring more than one type of log with you additional saplings if you have them going spare and additional bone blocks if you want a lifetime supply of bone meal because believe me you do start to go through bone meal at quite a rate when you're growing this stuff but that's the wooden saplings box i think a lot of these are going to have a little bit of space left in them as well so you can bring items in and out of those boxes when you want to and so that you've got a little bit of space going spare in case you craft stuff with the wood and you want to put that back in there so we're going to put that in the first position over here we can always reorder these a little bit later and we'll work on the redstone box in a second before that though i have this cobblestone box that i recently liberated from the storage system over here when i was starting to run low on cobblestone because i was crafting some redstone components and i think this box is actually just going to be renamed stone so i'll rename that now and the stone box is going to contain both cobblestone, smooth stone, and then at least a stack or two of each of the decorative stone types because we can use those for decoration here and there. Cobblestone, of course, is going to be one of the more important ones because it's used in crafting a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to craft pistons, if you want to craft dispensers and that kind of stuff while you're on the go, cobblestone is a good block to have around. Likewise, we're going to bring some natural stone. We're not going to bring stone brick because natural stone can be crafted into stone brick from this state, whereas stone brick can't be crafted back into natural stone. So I think it's probably a good idea to have a decent amount of that on you and of course from there you can break these down into all sorts of other craftable things smooth stone natural stone rather is of course a component in things like redstone comparators and repeaters and stuff like that so it has its uses as a crafting component that way 
as well. And last of all, like I said, we're going to bring maybe, I'll say two stacks of each of the andesite, diorite, and granite stone types so that we can have those there as decorative materials only. You can't really craft them into much else. In fact, what I think we might do is get ourselves an iron ingot and a few pieces of natural stone and we can turn those into a stone cutter because having one of those is going to mean we don't end up wasting materials. There we go, we got the stone cutter there. We're not going to end up wasting materials if we want to craft any of these into stairs, for example. I really need to start using a stone cutter more for stuff like that, for material conservation. And it's going to be nice to have one of those in here as well. We could also potentially bring a stack of gravel, which I have a, a decent amount of still here. I think I probably need to go gravel farming at some point in future. But yeah, there we go. We've got an empty space there for any other stuff that comes our way, but the stone cutter is going to be worth having in there to preserve materials. So that's the stone box going in there. Now let's take a look at the contents of my redstone box currently, because most of these are components that we will want around a stack of, I think, is probably going to be a good place to start. So let's top the redstone blocks up so that we have a stack of those and I am going to keep a stack of redstone dust in here despite the fact that you can break down the uh, redstone blocks into redstone dust anytime you want I think redstone blocks are still very useful in their own right as a power source and so having a decent amount of redstone dust on hand is probably a good idea as well now we'll need a stack of each of the comparator and a repeater components which I actually crafted beforehand and are in the components pile up here yet we've got a out a stack of those in there yeah and I think I have a couple left over in the redstone box so we can always transport those back into the storage system if we need to yep there we go now we'll need some redstone torches I've got some of those in here as well we'll bring a bunch of them and put the excess back into the storage system things like note blocks and hoppers and so forth are actually quite useful to have in large quantities because note blocks are very good as activators for redstone circuits hoppers are essential for various things I crafted a stack of those earlier as well so we'll put those in there we've already got a stack of dispensers and one of the uh, things I haven't noted about this most recent update yet is the fact that when you're in a 3x3 crafting interface you can actually shift click components into crafting interfaces now which makes crafting dispensers much much easier in fact I'm, pr I'm planning on doing a full episode about shift click crafting in future because you'll be surprised the amount of corners you can cut now that that is in the game next up we will need observers and droppers so we'll need you know roughly a stack of each of those in here as well and here's some iron crafted earlier let's get some pistons and I'll bring sticky pistons with me as well as slime blocks because we'll definitely need some slime blocks in there for making uh you know slime block flying machines and stuff like that let's bring a stack of those and I think I will also bring with me a stack of honey blocks now we have those because as we've seen in previous episodes they are now an interesting addition to the redstone arsenal and very much worth having with us so I'll put the pistons and the sticky pistons in there we'll put the slime and the honey blocks in in there with those. Now I want to keep the rails in here as well, although I will probably top those up so each of those are a stack. We've got some powered rails in here as well, which can be added in there. We'll put the regular rails in there. I'm actually going to take the lecterns out of here because they are a village workstation and I plan on making a whole village box as a separate addition to our ender chest here. I'm not going to craft up any more of the activator and detector rails right now because those are kind of, you know, individual use cases. They are few and far between. We're not using a great deal of those in the redstone circuits I'm making currently and I think having a decent supply of redstone lamps and maybe even crafting up a few more levers and stone buttons might be a good idea as well. Got a decent amount of each of those in here so I've grabbed what I can and you might want to bring pressure plates and things like that as well but there are a lot of varieties of pressure plates and some of them are very individual use cases once again. You have wood pressure plates that you know your entities can fall onto, stone pressure plates that entities don't depress and that kind of thing so it's going to be uh, really up to you if you want to bring that kind of stuff along this looks like a decent variety of stuff though and i think as far as redstone components go that is looking pretty good if you feel like anything is really missing from any of these ender chests by the way feel free to remind me in the comments because uh, there's a lot of items in minecraft now and i tend to get a little bit forgetful when it comes to some of this stuff so it's worth bringing them along we're going to have a separate box for minecarts and rails as well so we'll probably be able to fill up another shulker box with various components like that i think as regards the stuff up here let's actually bring the rest of these redstone lamps we can have 
have a separate box for lighting as well. I think that will do. I'm not going to bring any trap doors with me because I tend to craft those on the go anyway. But aside from that, I really do think that is the redstone box all done. Now let's take a look at what else we've got here. Fireworks, I'm pretty happy with as a box. We've just got a row of fireworks up here and then the components to craft. And remember, you craft three stacks of fireworks at a time if you're just using one gunpowder and one paper. So I can top up my fireworks from this box whenever I want to. And all I need to do is craft a few more when we start to run out. The ender pearl box, I think is probably going to stay. I think it's nice to have a good supply of these around. And I always tend to, you know, keep them in here because I don't want to carry them in my inventory all of the time. They do get very useful when you're building stuff, especially with a redstone in tight spaces. So it is worth having a decent supply of those handy. Backup gear is going to be kind of a user preference kind of thing. It's really up to you what you want to bring along and what you've managed to accumulate throughout your Minecraft adventure. I've got two crossbows in here that are piercing and multi shot, so the kind of things that are mutually exclusive. I've got my smite sword in here, a little bit of backup gear, including my one remaining piece of quote unquote god armor, uh, my frost walker boots, stuff like that, my three tridents, which have differing enchantments on each of them, except I think that's the channeling duplicates, a couple of spare sets of elytra and any mending gear that I don't typically bring with me like my fishing rod, my uh, flint and steel and shears and of course we've got the turtle shell helmet in here as well. I feel like having some backup arrows in here is a good idea as well. You don't have to have a huge amount of them when, like me, you carry an infinity bow with you everywhere, but we might want to have a mending bow with flame and so forth in here as well, just so we can keep an eye on that. I'm actually going to take two nether stars out of here, although having a nether star in the backup gear is always nice if you want to spring yourself a beacon every now and again, and I've got the conduits in here as well, although it might be worth taking those out and putting them in something similar to to a beacon box where we can uh, put together a decent amount of prismarine to go around the conduits and the supplies for a beacon. So that's my backup gear chest that's going in there and that is the first six boxes that we're going to be storing here in our ender chest. The next thing I want to work on is that beacon box. So I've got these two nether stars and my two conduits here as well. We're going to need three obsidian for the base of each beacon and we're going to need some clear glass, which I'm not certain I have a great deal of in here. So I might have to go and buy some from my librarians. We're going to go and buy some stuff from the villager trading hall in a second anyway. So might as well go ahead and do that now. But librarians have been my main source of glass for the last little while. I should really, should really use the front door of this place occasionally instead of just flying over the walls. Maybe I should put a roof on the thing like I've been promising to for a little while. There we go. Just grab a bunch of glass from these guys. That's more than enough for our beacon. Thank you very much. And if we go down here, I'm going to buy a bunch of gold carrots as well because another one of these boxes is going to be a food box. And while I already have a couple of stacks of golden carrots on me, it is always nice to have a backup supply. So let's turn those two nether stars into beacons. And with each of those, we will want enough blocks to make a beacon base. Now, typically you will want to do this with gold blocks for the optimal efficiency of the whole thing. And this is why with gold blocks, they actually have a shorter time to break than iron and any other type of block does. I think diamond, emerald and iron all take roughly 0.9 seconds, I think according to the Minecraft wiki, that it takes to mine them with an unenchanted diamond pickaxe, whereas gold takes 0.6. So it is one third faster to mine gold blocks out, which is probably a good reason to use them as part of a beacon base. However, I just don't have enough gold blocks right now. I haven't spent enough time AFK at my gold farm, or if I have, I've used the gold for other things like converting into powered rails. So in this case, we're really going to need to use emerald and iron, which are the two I have the most of of the other blocks until such time as we can get enough gold blocks. So with each of these in here, we've got three stacks of iron blocks and three stacks of emerald blocks from the chests that we had over here. And that is more than you will need. You actually only need 164 blocks, which would be two stacks and 36 in here. But I've decided to leave an extra handful of blocks in there simply because you will always need one more ingot or emerald or diamond in order to activate the beacon in the first place. So it always helps to bring more than you need when it comes to activating beacons out there in the wild. 
As for the conduits, I'm going to take both of them, put them in here, and provide an adequate supply of prismarine blocks. Now, I'll bring one stack of each because a conduit can be activated by dark prismarine, prismarine bricks, or regular raw prismarine. It can also be activated by sea lanterns, I believe, but the conduit itself will be a light source, and we're going to have the sea lanterns in a separate box anyway. So I'll put each of those in here, and this right here can be our beacon box. Now, in a minute, we might want to color code this along with the other boxes that we've got in here, maybe white or something, considering that the beam of a beacon is probably closest to white, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Next up, since we just did a bit of villager trading, I'm going to put some carrots in here, and this is going to be our food box. Of course, the types of food people like in Minecraft typically vary. I've been using golden carrots simply because they're a nice, easy trade from farmer villagers, and they have the highest saturation value of any food in the game, meaning once you've eaten them, it's going to take you a long time to get hungry again, which is why you'll find a lot of like endgame Minecraft players Players tend to use golden carrots as a food source. The other most efficient food source to use would probably be cooked steak, although I don't have a huge amount of that right now, so golden carrots is going to be my go-to, and we're going to name this the food box, and we're going to keep that in the chest here. Next up, since we have the lecterns on us already, what I want to do is make a village box where I fill up the entire shulker box with a bunch of stuff that's required for village life. Workstations, bells, bookshelves for the librarians, that kind of stuff is all going to go in here. So let's spend a bit of time crafting up some of the workstations that you need for the individual villages. And we finally get to use that composter recipe with the oak slabs now. It's now just seven oak slabs in a cauldron formation to get yourself a composter, a little bit more straightforward than using the recipe that involved fences from before. And we're going to go with 16 of each of the crafting stations, including stone cutters, lecterns, cauldrons, that kind of stuff. The cauldrons, definitely going to be the most expensive one on this list, but we will probably have enough iron to do the job judging by our iron reserves over here and I've even got a few extra ones in this iron box as well so plenty of that to work with. And at long last our village box has come together. We've got 13 workstations in here comprising all of the workstations that you will need for the different village professions. That's a lectern, a composter, a stone cutter, a cauldron, a brewing stand, a cartography table, a barrel, a loom, a blast furnace, a smoker, a fletching table, a grindstone, and a smithing table. I've also got as many bells as I could wrangle out of my villagers at the trading hall, and some bookshelves for the librarians as well, so they feel a little bit more at home. And I've also stuck in a crafting table for the player, because what is a player without a crafting table? We'll definitely need one of those in the ender chest anyway, but but that can be renamed as our village box and we'll pop that in the chest permanently. Next up, I think it's probably going to be a good idea to have a portable enchanting setup on us. And for that, we will need to make ourselves an enchantment table using two diamonds and some obsidian and a book, which we should have plenty of going spare around here. I think I might have some over in the farmhouse, come to think of it. Or alternatively, we could break down some of the bookshelves that are hereabouts. I could buy some more of those from my librarians, I guess, if I needed to. Yep, here we go, fellas. Always ready with the latest deals. That's what we like to see. Grab a few of those, because we will, of course, need the bookshelves for the enchanting setup itself, so good to have a few of those around as well. But if we break those down without using a silk touch axe, I think I'll probably grab a spare axe out of here if I have one. Oh, I don't. Okay, let's select a new non-silk touch axe from my supplies up here then. I mean, you've got an efficiency axe there. Do I really not have a spare? Okay, I've got a fortune one. I think that might have been there as the uh, sign from my previous trading hall, judging by the name. Well, it'll do the job for now, I suppose. We'll break down as many of these as we can to get ourselves 64 books. In fact, we'll need one extra for the enchanting table itself, but I think it's going to be nice to have a supply of books to go in this enchanting box as well. There we go, been a while since we crafted an enchanting table, but there we have it, and I guess the rest of these can go in a shulker box in here, so that we can have enough books to surround the enchantment table, enough books there to enchant if we needed to, and I guess we'll need a supply of lapis to go in here as well, because lapis is required for enchanting. It's been long enough since I did some enchanting that I'm actually <laughs> kind of forgetting some of this stuff, but I guess we can keep that around as well. What else will we need for an enchanting table? I think it's it's probably going to be a good idea to have a decent supply of anvils with us. And I'm going to take more than just one anvil because anvils are inclined to break every so often. It takes, you know, at least three actions to break an anvil, but there is a chance that it can break quite quickly. So we will definitely need a good supply of anvils. And I've got half a stack because I was converting some of the iron blocks into anvils to save 
a bit of space. I think that will do for now. I'm going to leave a bit of space in this shulker box though, because inevitably we will end up enchanting some books that we don't want to throw away, but we don't want to use immediately. And so having a little bit of storage space in this box is going to be an essential part of the whole process. So let's combine this. Let's rename this uh, enchanting box. And that one can get tucked away inside the ender chest here as well. And we can finally take this backup gearbox and put it back in here as well. This next one, I think we are going to make into a lighting box because there are various light sources in the game and you need a fair amount of them when you're moving to a new place especially if you want to make sure it is nice and mob proof we've got a ton of glowstone in here i'm thinking what we should do is make two stacks of each of the light sources and probably a couple of extra stacks of torches because they are the most easy to work with so i'll bring a few stacks of glowstone we'll turn some of that into redstone lamps using the remaining redstone dust we have down here and i really do feel like i need to go mining for redstone fairly soon because i am running a little low and yeah having crafted a stack and change of redstone lamps we're almost you know we're a little over halfway on that next stack but i do kind of need to go mining for more redstone and i wanted to keep those redstone ore blocks around because they're actually kind of useful for triggering observers some of the time so that's what we will add to the box for now we've got just under two stacks of redstone lamps we'll put two stacks of glowstone in here as well we've got nearly two stacks of jack-o-lanterns i guess we can make the last few of those from the carved pumpkins we've got here so add eight to that we can chuck the jack-o-lanterns in there as well they're a nice cheap light source of course and regular lanterns can go in after that i expect i have a few of those stashed somewhere so i'm not going to worry about crafting any more of those right now sea lanterns of course we have a vast amount of so i guess i can put those in there as an extra light source we probably have a decent amount of end rods from our end city raids but they would be in purple extras here we got 14 okay that's not a whole lot but i guess we could craft a few more of those as we want them as long as there is a placeholder in there for those, then that's going to be fine. We'll need blaze rods for those, though, and I need to rework my blaze farm one of these days because it's not really working the way I expected it to. So we're going to put those in there for now, and I think that's really all we need except for a few extra stacks of torches. And since we have a bunch of coal in here, we can turn all of that into torches, and let's fill up the remaining spaces over here with torches so there we go that is our lighting box all done and dusted a little bit of extra space in case we end up getting a bunch more lighting objects that we want to put in there so for now we'll just name that lighting box and it can get added to the ender chest keeping with the theme of coal i'm going to bring these along and we're going to start a fuel box because of course we will need fuel to be able to smelt stuff when we're on the go and i think having a couple of stacks of coal blocks is probably going to be a good thing in here a couple of stacks of coal to go in there as well some other stuff we can use as fuel include stuff like kelp blocks which i have a reasonable supply of thanks to my kelp farm over in the shipwreck we've got a couple of buckets of lava here in this chest which i will add to the chest here as well because we can always use those to smelt 100 items or so at a time and the rest of these spaces we can fill up with things like sticks and things like scaffolding i think it's going to be nice to have a variety of fuel sources in here as we need them and i feel like a couple of these slots can go towards being sticks and scaffolding for smaller fuel batches so that's the fuel box going in there the next one i think is going to be chock full of scaffolding and i've had a scaffolding box in the past i have no idea what happens to it sometimes i just leave it weird places and i think i will probably need to craft a fair amount more of it as the series goes on anyway let's throw the paper in there for now so i can pick up this string and see how much scaffolding i'm able to craft but we'll probably just make do with what we've got right now and then go and visit a mob farm a little bit later if we need to get some more string for the scaffolding i think i have a ton of string left over at the mob farm we recently built by the ski village it's just 5,000 blocks away so kind of difficult to go and find but a scaffolding box is going to be essential let's bring that with us and in fact let's actually bring a stack of dirt if we've got some spare dirt lying around here of course we do tons of dirt we'll name this the scaffolding box and that can be the new one for the ender chest now the last thing i had in mind was a rail box and that's mainly going to contain the types of rails that aren't the specialist kinds like detector rails and activator rails i think this is just going to be my minecart rail and powered rail mostly to clear them out of the boxes that i've got here at my storage area but also so that we can have a decent supply of those as we move around the world and anytime i need some rails i'll know that they are there in that box we could of course craft some more we could even get into rail duplication if glitches like that are still possible in this version of minecraft i actually haven't tried it as of minecraft 1.15 but i imagine it still will be and hopefully we'll be able to get a few more rails to fill up that box 
over time. But for now, I think we'll just work with what we've got here, spend a bit more time AFK at the gold farm, and name this one the rail box. And so let's take a look at what we've got left in here, because we do have a couple of extra boxes in here that have Wither Roses and Ink in, which I think I'm probably going to combine since they are both used to make black dye, although the Wither Roses are kind of their own thing because I've been using them for mob farms and stuff like that. However, I have few enough of them with me right now that I can combine that down into a single box and free up an extra space in my ender chest. I think I will keep the record box in here simply because it's a nice place to have it and it doesn't really fit anywhere else in my storage system right now. And as you can see, we still have a decent amount of space left in the ender chest. There are two more spots here which I'm actually going to fill with other items. The first one being a stack of ender chests. And this is going to seem like a really weird idea, but having ender chests stored in your ender chest is a really good way of making sure you can always take one with you before you go anywhere. You'll always know where to find them, and I've tried to keep an ender chest on me at all times. It's going to be especially important now we have tidied up the contents of our ender chest. Not only that, but each ender chest, if you break it with a non-silk touch pickaxe, breaks back down into the eight obsidian you use to craft it. The only thing you lose is the Eye of Ender, and so if you want to store obsidian in a compact way, which I certainly do right now because I have so much of it, you can just craft a bunch of ender chests and leave them in here so that anytime you need obsidian for a nether portal or something like that, it is stored there as ender chests. You just need to break two of those and you have 16 obsidian, which is more than enough to craft a nether portal basically anytime you want it. So I'm going to put those up here. We'll probably shuffle these around a little bit as we find the ideal layout for this. So I'm going to put the ender chests in there and I think one last thing I want to have is a spare bucket of water because having a bucket of water wherever we go is going to be worthwhile and if I don't have one in my inventory I can just look in my ender chest and find one. So we'll fill up a bucket of water from the river down here. I think one last thing that it might be worth including in the ender chest is a bed although we could always tuck that away in the uh, village box if we want to. Villagers are going to need beds after all so we should probably add a few to that but having a bed within easy reach within a single click of opening the ender chest is also going to be quite a good idea because you'll sometimes need to sleep at very short notice to prevent mobs from spawning or prevent mobs from coming after you. So I think that's probably going to be a good idea. Let's put the bucket of water in there. Let's grab another bucket so I can fill that up and have one in my inventory again. And let's see if I left any beds hanging around in here. I didn't, but I think I will take out a little bit of red wool from the supply here and we'll just craft a whole bunch of beds for both the villagers and for myself. And it's a good thing we left a little bit of room in the village box because I kind of forgot that beds don't stack. <laughs> so kind of nice to have a decent supply of beds in there. There as well. Let's call that done for the village box. And I've got one additional red bed in here. I can put the rest of those probably up in the wool supply box here so I don't lose track of where they are. And that is looking like a pretty solid amount of stuff for our ender chest. Now we're going to color code the rest of these as we want to. It's really up to you how to color code those, so uh, I'll leave that to you. But personally, I think it's going to be a good idea to leave a couple of undyed shulker boxes in here in case you need a little bit of extra inventory space. Those might be useful for bringing build pallets on the go with you. They might be useful for grabbing extra supplies if you need them. You know, filling with blocks in case you need some scaffolding or bridging blocks or something like that. But I think for now, that's going to be worthwhile to have a little bit of space in there. And I think it's also worth having a few empty slots in your ender chest just so if the need arises, you can put items in there and take them out at will if you want to just tuck a couple of tools away before you end up fighting the wither or something like that, which is something I have recent experience with, let me tell you. It's going to be good to have a few quick slots that you can tuck some stuff away so that the most valuable stuff on you can be stored nice and easily. So I hope you folks have enjoyed this look at what to put in your ender chest and if you think I've missed anything out of course feel free to leave your own advice in the comments of this episode. I think it's going to be really interesting to share tips on what to bring with you in your ender chest but I think we have covered the essentials in today's episode. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. It's good to be back folks. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.